Okay, hello and welcome to Seminar 2. It's a follow-up to using the protein database. And in Seminar 1, we learned how to find the structures that we wanted. If we have the luxury of knowing what the PDB ID number was, then we can go right to the structure that we wanted. Today we're going to do a search where we don't have that luxury. Say all we know is the name of the protein that we're interested in. Uh, we'll show you how to uh, do a effective search uh, just with the name of the structure alone. And for example, we're, we're going to use myoglobin, which you've seen before, and we'll probably see again uh, in this course and other courses. If you want to do a keyword search, you just do this at the very top of the screen. And so we'll just type in myoglobin. And you can see here when you look at the left-hand side, it tells you how many structures fit that search term. So there's quite a few of them. And you might wonder, if it's one simple protein, why there are so many? And this is explored a little bit in the guide uh, that accompanies this as the PDF. So you should have that guide with you when you do this, uh, with this seminar. And that explains, for example, that many of these structures occur from different organisms, as shown in the top left here. If you look at the sidebar here where it says refinements, this shows you how uh, the different structures are slotted. So some of them come from uh, different species here and some of them have different uh, uniprot molecule names. Some are solved by different experimental methods. X-ray crystallography is the major method for solving structures now, uh, but NMR is also a commonly used um, method, and another technique called cryo-electron microscopy will probably believe it be the way of the future for subsequent structures. Uh, so there's various ways that these can be solved. Uh, some have been solved at different times. And the beautiful thing about this sidebar here with refinements, this allows you to drill down then and find the particular structure that you want. So generally a good way to start is to go down to the molecule name. Because when you do a keyword search for myoglobin, you don't just get structures of the myoglobin uh, protein. You might get structures of proteins that say interact with myoglobin, um, things of that nature, and or a myoglobin-like. So if you know that you want a myoglobin structure, uh, I would start with uh, the molecule name, and then just click on myoglobin, and you see now you reduce the complexity from 407 structures to 382. So it's still quite a bit, but if you click on that, it'll take you to another window, where now it just displays those structures. And then, for example, you can drill down further and say, well, I know the species I want to search for, and say you just wanted to search those uh, structures that came from uh, Physid or Catadon, and that's actually sperm well. So if you click on that, there's 266 structures of that, and sperm well myoglobin uh, seems to be so common, basically because this was the per first uh, protein uh, whose structure was solved. Uh, there was lots of sperm whale blood that was uh, available back in the 1940s, and 50s, and as a consequence, there's lots and lots of this protein uh, to be used to do the first protein crystallographic studies on. And so that's been kind of a workhorse for uh, time uh, since then. And even now we have like, you know, almost 300 structures of this determined. So what you could do then is find a structure, say, of high resolution. Now, when you look under here, under X-ray resolution, uh, the lower that number, the greater the atomic detail of the structure. So if you wanted a really good structure, you would look for the ones that have less than 1.5 angstrom resolution. That means you could tell two atoms uh, distinguished from each other if they're only 1.5 angstroms apart. Uh, you could also look by the release date. So if you really wanted to go and see how far back these structures go, you could click on this. And when you do this, the nice thing is, is that it actually makes it more specific. So if you click, for example, on uh, before 2000, there's over a hundred structures there. Clicking on that will divide it further between 1970 and 1980. So that would be one of the first structures of uh, sperm whale myoglobin that was done. So now we've gone, of course, down from 407 just to one. If we click on that one, we get the structures uh, that were uh, done by John Kendrew, who actually was one of the per uh, people who won the Nobel Prize for uh, the first uh, protein crystal structure that was solved. And then once you've done this, once you've got it down to this one structure, then you can display it as you've normally done it, as you learned in the first seminar. Just use the same uh, in-screen tool, and there you've got your structure. 
So effectively what you do, whenever you're solving for a structure, you can just type in your keywords up here. Now we did it just by uh, the molecule name. You could search it by these other things as is implied here. Um, but searching just by the name of the protein and then drilling down with the refinements on the left hand side represents a reasonable way to do a search to get the structure that you actually want. And again, you can do this in the absence of knowing what the PDB ID is. And so at the uh, end of the, um, the little guide that goes with seminar two, uh, there's some uh, suggestions that you can use then to play with this, to uh, do some searches starting with certain protein names. And uh, then you can just uh, see how that goes. And of course, I'll be walking around doing this. And if anything comes up, I'd be happy to talk to you. So uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope you have a productive seminar.